welcome back to another episode of One Wingspan Above, where we discuss anything to do with ground effects. In this episode, we see that Lockheed Martin might be helping beat DARPA to building American Akrana plants by investing in regions. We start though by checking out Australian home builder James Greenberger with his mud skipper. We go over to RC Test Flight's latest ground effect video where he covers mechanical linkages to create stable ground effect flights. James is an Australian home builder who in the past has built a universal hovercraft from plans. He called it the Sea Demon and it was essentially a hovercraft with a set of wings and a tail attached. We covered the faith of the Universal Hovercraft Company in a previous video that I'll link below. In one of James's videos, he mentions that maintenance on the craft was substantial and that he was thinking about building a bigger hovercraft. He mentioned that he wanted to go for the record of fastest hovercraft. To date, the fastest hovercraft went 137 km an hour and was piloted by Bob Wynth in 1995. It seems though that he has foregone the hovercraft capabilities and built a pure skim machine without the hovering capabilities instead. The mud skipper, as James calls it, weighs in at about 400 kg and reaches about 120 km an hour. It seems to be a scaled version of a universal hovercraft, but with a more conventional stepped hull instead of a hovercraft skirt. As with the universal hovercraft, the wings are made from a single layer of material and seem to be built from bouncy castle material slotted onto aluminium tubes. The pressure differential around the wing would be responsible for keeping the wing in a basic aircraft wing shape. Daniel from RC Test Flight is testing the idea of having a mechanical linkage between a wand in the water and the elevons of his flying sled. Elevons are a cross between elevator for height and aileron for roll. Normally you would have none of these on ground effect vehicles as height would be just controlled by increasing power and roll would be not very useful and even dangerous when close to the water. The wand in the water does already get used for sailing boats that have water foils on them. Daniel wanted to find out if they could also be used with skim machines that have no foils in the water. Daniel found out from his crew testing that with zero elevon control, no wand to control his skim machine actually worked better. Then he tried linking the rods from the wands to the power trust motors. This also didn't work and was sketchy as he called it. Then he linked the canard set up with the wand, and a canard is an elevator that is situated in the front rather than in the back of the craft, and he thought that it seemed to work and that it might be good for small RC craft where air is often turbulent. We hadn't heard from Region for a while, apart from the fact that quite a few investors seem to be getting on board. Region, by the way, stands for Regional Electric Ground Effect Nautical Transport. Watch through some of our previous videos for even more information on them. The Boston Globe reports that Region plans to fly humans on its full-scale prototype next year. This makes the statement from Ocean Flyer in 2022 that they would fly 25 sea gliders in New Zealand by 2025 a little dated. In fact, they adjusted the year on their website to 2026 already, a slip in the schedule by a full year, which was to be expected. At the moment, Regent have built a flight simulator. This is possibly to train pilots, or should I say captains in this case, as it would be certified as a marine vessel to fly their sea gliders. Then just before we started recording this video, Regent announced that they have built a full-scale mock-up of their sea glider. Region stated that the mock-up represents a key next step in the build journey for regions that would enable customers to begin interfacing with a full-scale vehicle design and think about the passenger experience. This means that this model is static alone, not meant to be flying, but it serves a purpose to orient themselves on what systems go where and how to organize the payload layout for their customers. It seems that instead of the traditional T-tail, 
Regen are now playing around with the box section tail. This could be purely for looks as this model won't be flying, but it possibly could be to cram more area in the tail lifting surface. In earlier videos about the Viceroy, we observed that the tail area was quite small compared to other skin machines. But the tail area now seems closer to the surface of the water, which is not where you want it to go. It looks to be situated to pick up the prop wash, which is traditionally also not where you would like it. We already noted that this craft is made stable with computer control systems and wouldn't be able to fly without it. If this box section tail makes it into the final design, the inherent stability of the sea glider would be more in doubt. Now for the second thing, the renders on the region website and the quarter scale model all have 8 motors. The mock-up seems to have 12. This could be because they have opted for smaller motors, but more of them for added redundancy. Or they discovered they needed more power. Then the biggest news to date, it turns out that Lockheed Martin decided to invest in Regent. They have received a strategic investment from Lockheed Martin Ventures, which is a venture arm of Lockheed Martin. To date, no information can be found on the Lockheed Martin Ventures website about what this investment actually looks like. The Regent promotion video shows their camo marine sea gliders being carried to site where they will be charged and ready to go. It shows that Regent is selling defense on the idea that the craft flies between the sonar observable and radar observable zones. They indicate a 200 mile radius which lines up with the numbers on their website that stay in an end of life range of 160 miles. The passenger version would have 12 passengers and two crew, where they highlight that a pilot license is not needed. One of the renders of the payload version that would carry 3,500 pounds even denotes that the craft is autonomy ready. Does this mean that Lockheed Martin actually might have a head start to DARPA, who at the moment are also investing in ground effect technology? Let's have a look at where DARPA are up to. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA for short, serves as the central research and development organization of the Department of Defense for America. One of DARPA's latest projects to develop an American Hikarana plan has entered a new phase. The name for the behemoth they are working on is Liberty Lifter X. General Atomics and Aurora Flight Sciences have been chosen to produce blueprints for this high endurance, budget friendly X plane. It will have the ability to conduct heavy duty maritime, strategic, and tactical operations, similar in magnitude and potential to the C 17 Globemaster III transport plane. The craft must possess the capability to take off and land in Sea State 4, operate proficiently at altitudes fewer than 30 meters above the surface for extended on-water tasks up to sea state 5, which can reach up to 4 meters wave height, leave ground effect at elevations up to 3,000 meters, and carry immense payloads at speeds faster than existing sea transport platforms. The minimum required range for transportation is more than 12,000 kilometers. The two teams have adopted distinctive design approaches that will allow DARPA to explore a fairly wide range of design possibilities in Phase 1. According to their press release, the General Atomics team has opted for a twin-hull, mid-wing design to optimize on-water stability and sea-keeping. The aircraft uses 12 turboshaft engines for distributed propulsion. It features a lifting nose section, similar to that of the C5 Galaxy, and a ramp to rapidly unload cargo. Aurora Flight Sciences has developed a design that closely resembles a conventional flying boat, featuring a single hull, high wing, and eight turboprop engines for primary propulsion. The wing incorporates anhedral sections that slope downwards just beyond the engines and appear to extend to the waterline, with tips that may serve as winglets in the air and fins in the water. Phase 2 will commence in mid-2024, featuring ongoing detailed design, manufacturing, demonstration of a full-scale Liberty Lifter X-Plane. This seems a crazy tight 
timeline, as this is exactly the same year as Regen are planning to have their full-scale craft ready for flight. This while Regen have already done the design and a quarter-scale model testing of a far smaller craft. As more news comes out of Liberty Lifter, we'll update you. For now, thank you very much for watching. Keep in the loop by hitting the subscribe button and we'll see you here for the next episode of One Wingspan Above.